Hey y'all, so I made a little video for y'all the other day and I thought I might wanna just explain a bit more. Um, so the video I made on my TikToks and Instagram where I was saying how fed up I am that it's been over 10 years since I've had any um, and I'm deciding to take applications, I am. So uh, if you wanna apply, you just go to my Twitter. I pinned it at the top, you click on the thing, you click a couple more things and you send me a message and you tell me about yourself. Uh, tell me why I should pick you. But it's not going viral, but it's just popular. And um, I wanted to talk more in depth about why, because it's something that um, some people are having trouble believe believing. Some people can totally relate. Some people are like, hey, it's been five years for me. It's been 12. It's been such and such. But some people are like, oh, there's no way. You know, you're pretty. There's no way it could be that long. But there's so much that goes into it. It really, I guess it does have to do with being pretty. So um, just to kind of quickly sum things up. Um, I did talk to y'all about trucking and being a single parent, but to get more in depth, but not too in depth. So I was married to my kid's um, dad and it was an abusive relationship. I say I'm lucky to be, to have made it out of there alive. Um, I am not getting into any details about that. I never will because no matter what I think of that human, they will always be the father of my child. Um, and I, I don't feel it's right for me to throw our business out there um, because, you know, no matter how a relationship is, it is always two people that make a relationship. It is not all his fault. It is not all my fault. It's two people that make a relationship. Yes, it was abusive, but I left and that's it. Um, so after leaving an abusive relationship, I then moved to a little bitty town in Tennessee, a little bitty town of like 3000 people. And me being a conventionally attractive person moving there, your reputation can easily get around. So in order for me to be able to make friends and not be known as like a threat to these married women that I wanted to be friends with because I wanted my kid to be able to friend, be friends with their kids, I had to really dumb myself down. Like I had to not wear a lot of makeup. I had to not wear revealing clothing. And this is naturally how I feel, feel prettiest by showing off my body. Um, but I couldn't do that or it's a choice. Everything in life is a choice. I could have done that. But if I was to walk around like this in the little bitty town in Tennessee I used to live in, I would quickly, within a couple days, be known as the town tramp, the town slut, the town whore. No matter how long it had been since I've been with somebody. That's just the way reputations work. Somebody talks to somebody and before you know it's around the town. So I had to really dumb myself down um, in order for us to be accepted. Um, in order for my kid to be able to play with the mayor's kids, be able to play with the pastor's kids, um, for me to be accepted into groups. And I still wasn't all that accepted because I still wasn't from there. You know, all these people had grown up together. Not many people moved to these little bitty towns in the middle of nowhere for, you know, no reason. I mean, um, everyone, it's crazy. There were so many rumors about me that I was in witness protection, that I was like some failed movie star. I mean, there were all these rumors about me that you would be like, what? But yeah, because people don't know what to think when some pretty girl moves to a little bitty town out of nowhere. Um, so then it's been so long since I've been with somebody years and years if I would have wanted to go out to a bar there and pick up a guy, no matter how long it's been, and if it's one time, I get known as the town wild girl. Uh, being a single mom, it would be like, why aren't you home with your kids? You're a bad mom if you go out to the bar and you want to have fun. Unfortunately, that's just the way the world works, okay? And I can totally understand how a lot of guys can't relate to that because 
a guy, a single dad could go out to a bar and have a good time and he's just blowing off steam. He's just letting loose. He's still known as just a good dad. That's it. A single girl goes out and does that, does that a single mom, and she's known as the town tramp. She's known as being wild. She's known as being a bad mom. She could get freaking child services called on her. I mean, it's no telling. So, being a single parent, you have to be so careful when you are a single parent in a little bitty town where reputation is everything. Because if I would have started being wild by trying to date... I would have easily been known as, you know, this crazy single mom, and then my kids don't have the opportunities that they had. Um, or my one kid, I don't have more than one, but I'm just speaking generally. Then I dated a fella, he was amazing. We were dating for a while. Uh, we ended up separating because he had three kids, I had one. His life was just crazy. But we were going to be getting back together. Um, we were just kind of figuring ourselves out. Um, and I was still healing from an abusive relationship. But then he passed away. Um, he got in a car wreck. He passed away. That broke my heart. <laughs> I was heartbroken for a long time. And um, so then also you can't start dating too soon because it's a little bitty town. If you start dating too soon then you didn't really love the person, you know. Rumors are and reputation are so important in a little town. If any of y'all have grown up in a little town or you live in a little town, you know what it's like. In a big city, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, you have to worry about that and maybe your little group who you work with, who you live by, but not the way you do in a little town. Um, and then, you know, I was always working so many jobs to get by. I would work every Friday and Saturday night at restaurants, at bars, at stuff like that. Um, and that was just bartending. That was working restaurants. I wasn't working at any, like, wild bars. But, like, <clears throat> excuse me, there was this really nice fine dining restaurant, like, half an hour away in a little bit bigger city that I worked at. And it had a bar, and I would bartend at it. Um, and so, I was always working so that way I could make ends meet. And I was barely making ends meet, too. Um, I was driving school buses. I was working at different restaurants. So every Friday and Saturday night, I was busy with stuff. I didn't have time to date. And then on the weeknights, I'm at home. We're making dinner. We're sitting down having dinner. Uh, then we're doing homework. Then it's bath and bed. I mean, that's just the way it works. And then I got to wake up at 5 o'clock the next morning to go drive the school bus again. So I'm not going out on a weeknight, are you kidding me? <laughs> I need sleep, you know? Um, and you only meet so many people at your work. And then like, I did meet more than a couple people that would ask me out, like when I was working at the restaurants and stuff. But when would we go out? I had to work every Friday and Saturday night. You know, I was working during the day when the kid was at school. When would we go out? The only day I would ever have free was Sundays. And that was my one free day a week. So, of course, I was spending it doing fun things with my kid. That was the only off day I had. We were going to church every Sunday morning. We were going out. We were having fun Sunday during the day. That was our one day together. Uh, Saturday, I slept a, a little bit late till like 9 because I was up till midnight waitressing. And <clears throat> then I... Woke up, I would, my kid stayed with my mom and dad from like Friday afternoon till Sunday morning because um, of me working. So then Sunday or Saturday when I'd wake up, I'd either go have lunch with my kid, then go waitress in the evening, or I would work a double shift on Saturday. I'd waitress at one restaurant for lunch, and then I'd waitress at another for dinner. So I had no time to date. It was either I take time to date and I'm not able to pay my bills you know, and then if I want to go on a first date, I'm not bringing them to see my kid on a Sunday. Ain't no freaking way. Um, so there's just so much wrapped up in it. And when I went into trucking, you know, I went out for a couple months training. Then after that, my kid went out on the road with me for two years. We were out on the road together. We had an amazing time. My kid got to see all of America. Um, 
we would stop at like cities and we would go and um, take a train or Uber or something like that, go into town, have fun. Um, you know, we were, we just had the best time. So when was I going to date during then? I mean, <laughs> when was I going to meet somebody then? I'm not. Um, and then moving here now, this is where it kind of becomes my fault. So I moved to a big city, started local trucking, and then my, my life was still revolving around my kid, obviously. But that's when it comes to the part that I have just been so shy about putting myself out there to date. Like, I haven't gone to any bars to pick up people. And it's not because I'm working Friday and Saturday nights. It's just because I was so scared to put myself out there again. So, that's the part where it is my fault. The past five years that I've lived here, it has been my fault that I haven't put myself out there. But, it was like, well, during the week, I'm driving the truck and working 14 hours a day. So, I'm not going to go out. But, I could have gone out on like a Saturday night. But I just didn't because I really wanted to work on myself. I wanted to work on becoming the best me I could. Um, and so that's what I feel like I did. Then two years ago, I started making content. And I started making content because I wanted to be the best me I could. Sorry, somebody messaged me. Let me see really quick. No problem at all, period. Take your time. Sorry, <laughs> a girlfriend of mine's coming over and we go, we're going for a walk. We try to do some exercise together every weekend. So, you know, the past five years have been my fault that I haven't put myself out there. Um, I've just been really shy. And for a little while, I wasn't taking as good care of myself as I do now. Like, I wasn't wearing makeup. I wasn't making myself feel pretty. And that's one of the reasons, like, two years ago, I started making content because I wanted to start loving myself again. Part of me starting to enjoy my sexuality was putting myself out there. Like, um, I got to get off on uh, exhibitionism, I think it was what it's called, where you put yourself out there and people see you like it. It's so exciting for me thinking of people online watching me do the things I do on my adult site. Um, sorry, I talk with my hands a lot. <laughs> so that was part of me discovering my sexuality again and discovering myself again and growing into myself as an adult woman that isn't just a mom for so long. My life just revolved around my kid and I was just a mom. And I do not regret that one bit. Every day that I see my kid and see what an amazing human being they have become, I don't regret it one bit. I will never regret one day that I spent with them and I spent teaching them how to be a good person. But I do regret having or sacrificing myself a little too much. like. I got it in my brain that in order to be a good mom, I couldn't take care of myself. I couldn't spend money on going to get my hair done, that I needed to spend it on them, that I couldn't spend time going to get my nails done, that I needed to spend that time doing something for my kid. So that is something I regret. I regret not taking good care of myself like I should have. So, yeah, that's where I am now, oh, you know. One of the many, many reasons I started making content two years ago, or really, I mean, honestly, it's the main one, is because I just wanted to fall in love with myself again. I wanted to fall in love with the sexual side of myself, the woman side of myself, the just find who I was again. Yeah. And I feel like I've discovered my true self now who I truly am. I have worked hard to mold my body into the beautiful shape I love it being in. I've worked hard to mold my brain into the good human I feel like I am. I've worked hard to mold my business mindset into what I do now and learn the lessons I have. And now I'm finally ready to add someone to my life. 
I don't need someone in my life to define who I am, to create the person I am. I have created the person I love and I am. And now I'm ready to add to that. I'm ready to have someone that helps make my life better. And I want to make their life better. I can finally proudly say that I can add to someone else's life, that I could help make someone else's life better. So that's where I am. And that's why it's many reasons that it's been so long. And I know some of y'all can relate. I know some of y'all are going to still say, oh, bullshit, she's lying. But like I said before, if I was lying about something, it would be something that made me sound better. I'm not going to lie about something that makes me vulnerable and open and embarrassed. Because it is embarrassing that it's been so long. It's like... It's going to be nerve-wracking the next time I'm actually with someone. I mean, shit, the next time I kiss somebody, it's going to be nerve-wracking. <laughs> you know? It's just, there's a lot that goes into it. And there's so much more to this that I haven't even shared with y'all. That I might, well, I'm, I'm sure I will share. Because honestly, two years ago when I started this, I would have never known that I would share the fact that I'm a mom. Because that's something I didn't talk about for two years. Uh, I would have known, never known the fact that I talked about an abusive relationship because that's something. I think I started talking to y'all a little bit about that about a year ago. So there's so much that I can still open up about to y'all that I haven't opened up about. And I think we'll get there. But for right now, this is a good, good start. Thanks for listening to me. And let me know if you can relate because this is embarrassing. But it's something also that it's just part of me. Just like me being clumsy is embarrassing. Me being shy is embarrassing. Well, me going so long without being with someone is embarrassing. But it's just part of me. And it's not something that's going to last forever. It's something I can work on. And it's okay. Because we're not perfect. So, I love you. Thanks for listening to me. And comment below and like this video and make me feel better by telling me you relate in some way. 